what up gemini and thank you guys so much for tuning in okay guys so this is going to be your august mid-month spread and uh with this retrograde that we are doing or we are going through right now um i feel like it's hitting every sign differently so hopefully it doesn't hit you guys too hard but uh let's see what's going on what's going on with the sign of gemini so this will be from august 15th to september 15th okay what is going on with the sign of Gemini? Okay, guys. So the energy for this reading is the two of wands. So there's, um, you know, you're at a point in your life where you're at a, folk, uh, a fork in the road, literally, where there's two ways that you can go. But the guy in this uh, card, he already knows which route he's going to take. And with it being, you know, uh, the wands, this is something that you're going to be very, pa uh, pa <laughs> I can't talk today, guys. This is something you're going to be very, very passionate about, um, a direction that you do want to go in, something that you see um, as rewarding. And it could be towards someone that you feel you have unfinished business with or something that you've been involved with in the past that you feel that you need to revisit and maybe get some closure or just finish things out in a proper way. Now, uh, there could have been some betrayal that happened with this unfinished uh, situation that you may be going back to, but it's like you're in a place that you're getting over it. And this is after, you know, you guys taking a break or this could be you taking a break from a job, from a person, from a lover, okay, whatever it may be. So let's see what's going on, guys. So the first card that you have for your past is the Ace of Swords in the Reverse. Now, with the Ace of Swords in the Reverse, this is, um, you know, this is a lot of arguing. This is a lot of conflict. This could be between two people where, you know, one person is always trying to get in the last word. But what this card warns us about is that, you know, if we keep going this route, it's going to lead to a lot of shit. It's going to lead to a lot of problems. Okay, but that was in your past. So let's see what was happening, what this conflict was about. All right. So there was conflict here and somebody was rejected. I feel that somebody got cut out because of this conflict. There was some sort of loss that was felt either on your end or someone else's end. But then we do have the Ten of Cups. So... I feel that someone or a certain situation was cut out in order to find, you know, this stable happiness, this really abundant feeling. Maybe there's just someone getting in the way. Okay, this is you guys at the bottom of the deck now. So, yeah, you guys are cutting out something, um, thinking that it's going to lead you to a happier place. So the next card you guys have is the Nine of Pentacles. So for some of you, um, this may have been you cutting out a lover. And now just being single and abundant on your own, okay? Maybe that's what was stressing you out. For others of you, after cutting out this personal situation, you could have just felt um, better altogether. And with the Nine of Wands in their verse, you chose to give up, okay? And it seems like you feel that uh, you let go of a heavy burden by cutting out whatever this was or whoever this was. All right, two cards I grabbed. So, you know, with this... You guys went back to someone from your past or someone from your past came back to you and this made you feel balanced, okay? But in order for this to have happened, you have to cut someone out, okay? So someone got rejected so that you could focus on someone from the past. The next card here is the King of Wands in the reverse. Uh, so whether it's you guys taking this energy or if you're talking to a fire sign or just the other person taking this energy, um, the King of Swords in the I mean, the King of Wands, I apologize, guys. The King of Wands in the reverse is somebody that is very charming, you know, great to talk to, uh, you know, easily can sweep you off your feet, but they're extremely unreliable. This is someone that's not going to be there for you, um, you know, the way that you want them to. Someone who does things strictly for their convenience. And, you know, the King of Wands in the reverse, honestly, they're going to tell you, you know, if this is a love situation or a love interest, they're going to tell you whatever they need to tell you to convince you that it's a good idea to sleep with them, okay? So they're that type of person. And with the two of ones in the verse, it's like you feel lost in this. Someone's, uh, you know, being promiscuous, and there's a sense of not knowing which direction you want to take. And you're trying to manifest 
something that emotionally fulfills you. So, you know, if this is someone else taking this energy, I can see how frustrating that is for you guys because it's like you're trying to manifest it. And with the Ace of Cups, this is solid. You know, if you're ever doing a love reading on um, how someone feels about you and you get this card, like you're you're solid. You know that this is someone that genuinely cares about you. But if it's you trying to manifest this with this person, then I can just see disappointment coming because it's genuine on this part. And then someone's fucking up on this part. It can also be vice versa, though, where someone's trying to manifest something with you and you're just not about it and you're not on the same page. Okay. Now, the first card that we have for the present moment is the Knight of Cups in the reverse. Okay. So we got the um, King of Wands in the reverse and the Knight of Cups, which mean very similar things. The Knight of Cups in the reverse is somebody who is promiscuous and, you know, more than likely has more than one lover. Okay. And this is causing conflict. Okay. This is causing arguing. This is causing bickering. Um, it's making things uncomfortable. And I feel that you guys are just trying to be in a stable place right now. Okay, you're trying to get out of any sort of bickering, any arguing, and you're trying to find a way to kind of, you know, throw some water on the fire. The next card here, guys, is the Six of Pentacles. So again, you know, there's the stability that you're trying to build, whether it be with this current situation or whether it be within yourself. And then with the Six of Pentacles, you're just, you're just trying to find balance, okay? And it could be with this person from the past here. Okay, because you feel uh, temperance around them. So I feel like you're just trying to figure out how all of this fits into your life. Okay. Why is the Six of Pentacles here? Okay, trying to find balance, but there's a third party situation happening. And it's causing a shitload of frustration. Okay. Now, the next card is the Queen of Wands. So, if it's not a fire sign that you guys are talking to, there's just um, a lot of passion happening here. And, you know, especially with the Wands, passion can go both ways. You know, passion can be used to have, you know, the most incredible night of love making, or that passion could be used to grab the nearest vase and chuck it at your face. So, it's like that sort of thing. So, um, there's a lot happening here where I feel there's frustration. I feel that there's people fighting and arguing. Um, there's passion and someone is having the feeling of moving forward. Okay. Throw, don't throw vases at anyone's face, guys. Okay. And, you know, you're trying to be patient throughout the situation because, you know, there, it could be someone doing this to you and you're just hurt and, you know, you're upset about this, you're frustrated, and you're trying to be patient with them, and you're trying to, um, you know, wait things out and see how things happen, because you still love this person, or you still could have some emotions towards this person, but eventually I just see you getting up and moving forward, okay? We do have uh, the Five of Swords in the reverse at the bottom of the deck, so this is you trying to avoid conflict at all costs, you just don't want to be involved with it, Okay? Now, the first card we have for your future is the Page of Pentacles. So the Page of Pentacles is all about, um, you know, talk about a new project or a new idea that you want to bring um, into the manifestation. But there's someone who's not on the same page. There's someone who's trying to be logical about this and saying, okay, you know, let's go this route because it's probably the best thing for us to do considering, you know, all the pros and cons. But, you know, this could be your energy or this just could be somebody who's opposing, you know, the stable nature that they want to go into. But with this page of swords in the reverse, this is someone who's acting very reckless. It's like somebody's trying to go about things in an honest way, but it's like you guys may not be letting it happen. And, you know, I'm not trying to point fingers at all, but, um, you know, if your energy comes out, I'm going to automatically assume that for the majority of you, it's going to be you guys that are acting up. And maybe this is because, you know, there was hurt done to you. Somebody lied to you. Somebody cheated. Uh, somebody had somebody else. And now they're trying to talk to you and be like, okay, well, we can work this out. And you're just like, no, are you kidding me? Like, do you not know what you just put me through? So whichever way it goes, there's somebody who's trying to talk it out and there's someone who's just not having it. All right. But there's a sense of feeling trapped in the situation. All right. 
The next card you guys have is the Knight of Swords. So this is you guys. Um, and this is you guys cutting out any bullshit that's going to be unnecessary to you. That's not going to help you grow. That's not going to benefit you. And that may mean that you have to let go of this person that you're passionate about. Okay? Or maybe there's a fallout between two people because uh, you're passionate about someone else or there's someone new that's coming into your life. But I see a lot of fire here. So for a lot of you, you definitely could be talking to a fire sign. Yeah, I see. I see every element, but fire more than anything. Okay. Now, the last card you guys have here is a chariot. So the chariot is all about uh, things progressing quickly. Now, it could be literal because, you know, the chariot is a moving vehicle. So this could mean that, you know, you're moving to another place. Your job is relocating to another place. Um, you know, you're traveling to see someone, someone traveling to see you, or just things happening with speed. Okay, and there's secrets around this quick um, change that's coming. Okay, but with the Queen of Pentacles, um, you guys could just be doing as much as you can to go towards stability. Or for some of you, you could be starting something new with someone new and you're keeping it on the hush-hush and something that could be happening quickly. Okay. And maybe you're just keeping things quiet because you just don't want to um, <laughs> contaminate something new by telling people. And I'm like that sometimes. You know, I personally don't like to look stupid. So it's like when I'm talking to someone new, even from my closest friends, I, I don't say anything because you know how it is. You get excited and then like a week later you find out that this person is trash. So uh, it could be that sort of thing where there's someone coming into your life. It's happening, you know, quickly. It could be an earth sign. And you are moving quickly towards them. There's something about them that gravitates, uh, that you gravitate towards them or vice versa, or it's, you know, mutual. And you're just keeping it, up, you're keeping it on the low because there's so much shit that you're coming out of. The only thing I would say, Gemini, is that make sure that you guys are really clearing out um, the energy that you have from this past situation before jumping into something new. Because if you're doing one thing after another, uh, this is going to end just as messy. Okay, whether it was you who did someone wrong or whether it was someone who did something wrong to you, I just see a lot of movement. I see you guys, you know, being stretched all over the place. So uh, just make sure that you're taking care of yourself before anything else. Make sure that you're happy within yourself, okay? Because if you feel like trash because someone did something to you or you did something to someone else, you just don't, you know, give give things time to breathe, but I just, like, even just looking at the colors and all these cards out, I'm like, holy shit, there's so much going on here, okay, but let's see, um, what the advice is for you guys this month, okay, and also for those who have been looking to get, um, personal readings, I do have the wait time down, uh, anywhere from one to two days, so you guys could always do that, okay, so similar to what I said, the card you guys got was Lake Stillness. And this is by the Earth Magic Oracle Cards by Stephen D. Farmer. Okay, guys. So let's see what this says. But um, this is going to be in alignment with what I was telling you about. You know, just make sure that you take a moment to kind of breathe before jumping into something. Sometimes we're so worried about being distracted so that we don't feel the pain of what's inside of us. And it could be stuff that's, you know, years old. But let me read into this and then I'll talk my shit. All right, guys. So you have, um, for a lake, the subdued pastels of this early morning light quietly announced that the night is over and the sun is rising. The lake itself hadn't, uh, hasn't wake, awakened from its rest and remains still and undisturbed. It welcomes the coming day, ready to respond with grace and fluidity to whatever currents and movements appear in his belly or upon its skin. The surrounding vegetation thrives from the abundant water near the shoreline. And the unoccupied boat lies in wait for its next passenger. All is at rest in the sea. It's in the deep internal stillness that we find our being and come to know that we are intimately united with all creation. To achieve this mindset, we must slow down once in a while and get away from the surroundings that interfere and distract our inner tranquility. When we do so, this profound stillness is available at all times, regardless of the environment. We can experience the sensation with steady, conscious breathing, or we can simply pause for a few moments and be still. The tempo of life these days has sped up considerably, 
and there seems to be no end to this quickening pace. Immersed as we are in, technology, in the technological whirlpool, there seems no escape. However, there is no need to be a prisoner to the hurry-up syndrome, nor is there a need to feel trapped by the awareness of the collective in intensities that massive numbers of humans are experiencing these days. No matter if the noise is from your environment or your seemingly nonstop thinking, it is critical for you to seek stillness. Find it in your world, whether it is a special place in your home or a place in nature that is far from human-made noise. Of particular importance is finding it inside yourself, which can be made easier by being in a quiet place in a natural setting. Doing so not only relaxes your mind, but also heightens your awareness and senses. Okay, so just like what I thought, there's just too much going on in that spread, guys. Um, and I feel that, I think the biggest mistake that we all make, and, you know, it's, it's not that we all do it all the time, but I'm sure once or twice we're all guilty of doing it, where it's like you get out of a painful situation or you get out of something that doesn't work for you and you want to just, you know, immerse yourself in the next thing so that you can forget. But when we do things like that, we never fully heal from anything. What we do is we just lift the rug and we sweep all that bullshit under it. And then one day, you know, you're going to see that your rug is kind of lumpy. And when you lift it, it's like, oh, my God, and shit is going to be too hard. So I just feel right now, guys, that you need to take a step back. And I say this from a very loving perspective where it's just like there's something that you need to heal from. There's just been a lot of chaos, especially maybe with this retrograde. It may be hitting you harder than usual. But you have to heal because I just feel like there may be some pains that you guys are holding on to. It doesn't have to be something that happened yesterday or last month. This could be things from years ago that is just like you kind of turned away from it. You kept yourself busy and you didn't, you know, revisit this topic ever again. And these are things that are affecting you. And especially, you know, within the last few readings that I've done for Gemini, there's just been so much confusion and a lot of scattered emotions and a lot of pain and a lot of hurt and just things being all over the place. And guys, what you got to understand is the only people who hurt people are hurt people. So if this is happening to you over and over and over again, you can't run from this. This is something that's going to be necessary in order to get that tranquility that you want. And I know Geminis are very up and going. You guys are very spontaneous and you want something new and you move fast. And, you know, that's why there's a lot going on. And for me, a tourist that I like to kind of just sit home sometimes. So, um, you know, I'm giving you my uh, biased opinion. But um, there's good that comes with patience. There's good that comes with just waiting to see how something is going to, you know, work out. And just like how Taurus is, so some of Taurus, we need to work on kind of being more spontaneous and it's kind of like you guys have that down. Maybe um, some of you just do need to work on taking a step back and breathing and know that it's okay to sit in stillness. And that's something that may be uncomfortable for you. And I think that it's so important that we tackle the things that are uncomfortable. Because um, for me, per, uh, me personally, I was uncomfortable for a long time with just being alone. And that doesn't even mean in a romantic aspect. It's just I come from a very large family. There's like, you know, just in New York, I have three to four hundred like members of you know my family so there's always someone there there's always a distraction there so it took me a good two years to be able to sit in a room and be comfortable in my own silence and you know we have to tackle these things that we're not naturally good with not saying that you guys aren't good with it but it's just right now you know I want to make sure that you guys are taking care of yourself you know, promoting self-love for yourself, giving yourself daily affirmations, watching motivational videos, you know, do your meditation at night, get your chakras in balance and do what you have to do. But there's just a lot going on. So I definitely want you guys to hold tight. Um, so definitely let me know, you know, if this resonated with you. If you guys do want a personal reading to see what's going on in your life, I'm more than happy to help. And um, I did just tell Taurus this because I posted their video before yours. But um, I do want to start doing different readings for you guys because I have been doing the monthly and mid-month readings and I've been doing the love readings. So I want to jump into other things. So I'm taking suggestions because I want to do uh, what it is that you guys are going to seek the most. OK, whatever's going to be beneficial to you guys. So um, in the comments, just please put anything that you're interested on in me reading for you guys. And whichever one has, you know, the more likes or the most thumbs up, those are the ones that I'm going to pay attention the most to. All right, guys. So thank you so much, Gemini. I love you guys. Take care.